33 things that non-Americans think are myths about the USA, but actually aren't. They're actually true. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining. And with the USA being the entertainment capital of the world, many people outside of the USA know a lot about this country that they see through movies, that they see through television. And people watch these things and say, well, I mean, is it is it really true that the U.S. is really like that? Do they really do those things? And some of those things, actually, we really do. They're not just for television, and that's what I'm going to talk through in this video. By the way, this is a live stream. If you're on the live stream, I look forward to hearing what you think, maybe answering some of the things that are like, Chris, is this true about the USA? Um, because the actually reason or the inspiration for this video was I read an article on BuzzFeed, everybody's favorite journalistic publication, titled this, 34 things non-Americans think are myths about Americans, but I'm sorry, they're all true. And uh, the way BuzzFeed did this was they combed Twitter for things that people asked is this true about the USA? Is this a myth? And they took all 34 of those things and put it in one article, all their tweets, but didn't actually respond to any of them. Uh, and so that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna actually respond to the tweets that BuzzFeed selected in their list of top 34. Why is this video 33? Because I removed four, because there were like four doubles and I added a couple myself. So that's where we get to 33. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into number one, the first myth that people wonder about the USA, they see this on television, is do Americans really have these garbage disposals or is that a myth? And I would say most American households have a garbage disposal in their kitchen sink. I almost don't know anybody that doesn't have a garbage disposal in their kitchen sink. You don't throw garbage in the garbage disposal, but it connects uh, like where the drain water goes down so that way you can flip a switch and then um, any like food and stuff like that that you put in the sink down in the drain gets ground up by the garbage disposal and away it goes. You know, garbage disposal costs between two and three hundred dollars. I think only in really old houses would you not have something that you grind up that way. And it's definitely like one of those um, cultural things, say people who grew up in the USA with a garbage disposal on their sink versus those who haven't. Those who haven't are like very leery to put things down the sink into the garbage disposal because it might clog it. But boy, let me tell you, you flip that thing on and everything in there just goes Whoom! and right down the drain. Uh, the second myth that people really wonder about the US is do Americans really call McDonald's Mickey D's or is that a myth? Uh, we really call McDonald's Mickey D's. Now, um, you know, everybody has different names for McDonald's. In Australia, it's um, Macca's. Uh, in Thailand, I love Ronald McDonald. If you go there, it makes the classic Thai pose. But I feel like related to McDonald's, one of these things that is a myth is that um, people think because McDonald's is American that Americans love McDonald's, like that it's our favorite restaurant. And I think um, nothing could actually be further of the truth. Uh, McDonald's in the US, if you look at what they sell, they're not really selling good food. You know, there was the movie that came out a few years back called Super Size Me, and Super Size Me was all about how terrible the food at McDonald's is for you. And that movie came out and McDonald's business didn't go down at all because they aren't selling good food. They are selling convenience and convenient food and food that you can get really quickly. They're on the side of freeways. They have drive throughs If you are hungry, you can get food that will fill you quickly. Not that's tasty or not that's necessarily healthy. Uh, and uh, the paint killer 93 points out um, you do not go to McDonald's, you end up at McDonald's. I think that's a really good phrase. Thank you for that, Canada. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, the Uniplex points out it's Mickey D's in Canada. Jeff doesn't call it Mickey D's. Jeff calls it McDonald's. Well, thank you for that one. Uh, Dunk calls it Mickey Don Don's. All right, Mickey Don Don's. Uh, and Pee Wee Doc says Mickey D's all the way. Um, all right, and uh, there was a whole discussion about garbage disposals, uh, and Kathy points out that she does not have a garbage disposal in Australia. So yes, this video is great for Americans and non-Americans, because Americans, you'll probably learn something about people outside of the U.S. going like, really, you guys have that, or you guys do this, or this all the way. All right, myth number three. 
Do Americans really wear their shoes in the house or is this a TV myth? Is the ground cleaner in the USA? I am very confused by this. And yes, if you watch American television, everybody has their shoes on inside the house, inside their apartments. And I would say it is definitely more common for people to wear their shoes in their home than it is for them to take off their shoes in the USA. Now we are a um, non-shoe wearing family in our house. We take off our shoes. That's the way I was raised. Um, that's the way OC girls raised. That's the way we keep our house. We don't wear our shoes. But we have a little sign by the door uh, that says, all feet with shoes that come in this house will be removed. I'm gonna repeat that again. All feet with shoes that come in this house will be removed. Just to really make it clear to people when they come in that you do need to take them off when you come in the house. And I I really don't get some of the like shoe wearing in houses because I don't know, I find it more comfortable to take my shoes off. I, I'd be really interested for people on the live stream that wear your shoes in the house why? Why do you wear your shoes in your house? Because I, I really, I really don't understand it, and I don't understand uh, where that comes from. And there's plenty of people in the chat that say um, no shoes for me, but I'm just curious for people who keep them on, um, why, why they do. <laughs> and points traveler points out. Um, uh, no, our grounds aren't cleaner, our houses are just dirtier. And I think that definitely is the case. Like, there's a lot of cultures that will, you know, use the floor as a place to sit or do a lot of things. We don't do that in the U.S. In, in your home, you don't probably sit that much on the floor. You probably sit on a sofa or a chair, but not the floor because uh, it is not that clean. Um, now, Wu Taiwan says, I hate taking my shoes off because uh, my feet get cold. All right, that's a good one, Wu Tai. You know, in Southern California, not a problem since it's always uh, pretty warm here. Samurai says, I wear my shoes only if I forgot something. Uh, Alex says, I can't wait to take my shoes off. Jeff says, I wear slippers. Um, and uh, Ice Cold Beverage says, I have a comfy pair of house-only shoes, Van Slip-On. You will see that a lot in the USA as well. And actually, if you've ever watched the television show Mr. Rogers on PBS, that's what Mr. Rogers does when he comes into his house. He takes off his outside shoes and then he puts on his inside shoes. The fourth myth that's true is do Americans really put bread in the freezer or is that just a myth? Uh, and this is one where I don't know about all Americans because I haven't honestly looked in a ton of people's freezers, but we buy bread and put it in the freezer, not because we need bread in our freezer, but just because we buy a loaf of bread and it takes us a long time to eat the loaf of bread. And so a great way to save that loaf of bread is to put that bread either in the refrigerator or to put that bread in the freezer. And then yes, to eat it, we do have to um, toast it or microwave it. And I will say the toast that we, uh, the bread that we take out of the freezer, we take it out of the freezer, we put it in the microwave for eight seconds, and then we put it in the toaster to toast it to kind of get it going. Uh, Kathy in Australia puts bread in the freezer. All right, I'm glad uh, we're not the only ones, but I think, you know, there's certain cultures like uh, the French, perhaps, that would be like the croissants, they must be fresh. Croissants cannot be frozen. Bread cannot be frozen. Brandon says, I don't put bread in the freezer. That is crazy talk. Uh, Points Traveler, frozen garlic bread. Frozen garlic bread is great. You go down into your local supermarket, get the frozen garlic bread. That goes great in the toaster. Phil also puts bread in the fridge. Uh, very good. So I'm glad to see I'm also not the only one. So thank you for sharing that as well. Um, and uh, just one more thing about shoes. Yuritsa says that my grandma's, we have to wear shoes because the floor is cold. I think that's something I've seen that quite a bit about uh, people wearing them because otherwise their feet get cold. <laughs> And uh, see, OC Girl uh, says, the weirdest part for her is Americans have carpet and they wear shoes on carpet or let guests wear shoes on their carpet. It is pretty weird, I agree. That's why we, OC Girl and I, remove people's feet if they have shoes on. Um, Wu Tai says, if I have an open C account, I will have a gift for you. I you're going to have to tell me what an open C account is. So maybe I will have to look that up and, and get back to you. Maybe, maybe I need to make one. I always love gifts. Who, who can turn down a gift? Um, the fifth myth about the USA that's true 
is, uh, do Americans really fly flags on their houses, or is that just a myth? And yes, Americans really fly American flags on their houses. We have an American flag on our house. I should say, we did until about two weeks ago when there was a really big storm and it blew the flag off and I've been too lazy to put it up again. Um, I'd say there's a fair number of Americans that put their flags up all the time. Uh, there's a fair number of Americans that put them up for just special occasions, um, for holidays, things like that. There's uh, one street where I grew up in San Diego in Point Loma, uh, which is a big military community that down um, Rosecrans Street, the main street in Point Loma, on Sundays there's like a club of old retired people and they put out flags lining miles of Rosecrans. It's actually kind of really neat to drive down the street and see all of these American flags. I will say with the whole Ukraine situation going on right now, a lot of people have replaced their American flags with Ukrainian flags or have put up the American flag and the Ukrainian flag. I think you tend to see more American flags in places where people have bigger houses and where people see the house. So for example, Newport Beach, which is a famous community of the ultra wealthy that have boats and boat docks and they have a lot of American flags because a lot of people see their houses. People who live out in the country, nobody's around, they might not hang a flag because nobody's there to hang a flag. Um, experts agree says I let my freak flag fly. All right, thank you, uh, experts agree. Z says I fly the American flag and illuminate it at night. Very good, Z. The proper way to fly the American flag if you fly it at night is to illuminate it. Uh, Zachary says, uh, I've got my USA flag too. Phil says I fly it on holidays. Um, and uh, so a lot of people uh, echoing that they fly their flags as well. Uh, and yeah, Pee Wee Docs does point out that flag flying much like McDonald's popularity is on the wane, there is not as much today as there was 20 years ago for sure. That's a great point as well. Um, and Paint Killer says, in my area you see a lot more Armenian flags due to the Armenian genocide. Uh, interesting. And Samantha says, Canadians put up flags when there's a hockey game. There you go, Canadian pride. And the Uniplex says, uh, we've got a Ukrainian flag, but otherwise a Canadian flag. Um, Myth number six, do Americans really go to church every Sunday or is that a myth? So the number of Americans, I looked up the statistic, that <clears throat> consider themselves affiliated with a church or synagogue or temple is approximately 40 to 50 percent. The amount of Americans that regularly go to church every weekend is approximately 20 percent. Um, but this is where you go and say, uh, Osigro and I, we don't go every Sunday, we go every Saturday. We don't like to wake up in the mornings on a Sunday, so we go to a Saturday evening service. That way I get a little bit more sleep on Sunday. But I think this is another one where if you look at trends, church going uh, is definitely on the decline. Um, but if you look at the other trend in the US, what is going up are like mega churches. So the small little churches are declining, but the like really big mega churches with, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of members are on the upswing. Um, Dylan asked, where am I getting these eight year old tweets? This is the article that Buzzfeed wrote that I'm responding to that has all of these tweets. And I don't know how what data mining they did to find all of these old ones, but that's what they put together that I felt I needed to respond to. Um, Paint Killer says, maybe in the Bible Belt, everybody goes to church on Sunday, but not the rest of the country. Uh, and Meritocratic Mafia says, is Christianity frowned upon in the Bay Area as per Silicon Valley? I do think in more techie circles, Christianity um, is not as embraced as it is in perhaps places like, uh, to the point of the Bible Belt, the like the South, um, or even like the center of the country. Um, Christianity is a bit bigger there. Uh, Phil says he doesn't go to church, he watches on TV. Yeah, so you can watch it on TV, there's a lot of television um, services. Uh, also a lot of churches live stream it too on YouTube or things like that. Um, and uh, Samurai says you can take it with you in your heart if you have no time for church. And Dylan agrees church is on its way down. Um, but in other cases, it's on its way up too. So, all right, number 
Seven, myth number seven, do Americans really have show and tell in school? I thought that was a myth. How often do you have it? What if you run out of stuff? Yeah, so, uh, grew up uh, in the U.S. in California, and in, like, kindergarten and elementary school, we definitely had show and tell. For us, it was like, um, a different kid every day would bring something to show and tell, and if you figure there's like 30 kids in the class, then that's 30 school days, and so, you know, every, um, say, six or seven weeks, it will be up your turn again to bring something to show. I don't think anybody ever ran out of stuff, because as a kid, you at least have 10 toys or something to bring in in a given year, and then the next year, and you can bring the same stuff in again when you have another teacher. Um, and uh, just one uh, back on the church discussion, uh, Points Traveler says mega churches down south are doing well. So yeah, I think that um, people's different views on that depend on where they live and all this. The U.S. is a big country. <laughs> and uh, Kathy says, what a silly myth, show and tell. I'm, I'm curious, people outside of the USA, um, Australian friends, Canadian friends, did you have show and tell in school growing up? Uh, <clears throat> James said, someone brought a baby goat to my daughter's show and tell at her preschool. Oh my gosh, that's that sounds super cute, actually. I think that'd be neat to have a baby goat. Um, Kathy says in Australia, they have show and tell in primary school. That's about, so elementary school or early grades, that's about where it ends here as well. Uh, Electric Rick, my dad loves magic, and so he would show off a magic trick. That's good. When I was growing up, uh, Electric Rick, my dad often had a lot of magic tricks for me. I didn't pick up the same amount of dexterity in my hands that I think he did. Randy said, uh, I did uh, show and tell in kindergarten. Mm. Paint Killer said, I had some in elementary school, but not since I currently teach middle school, and I don't know of any show and tell there. The Uniplex also had it in Canada. All right, great. So, um, and you know what? I know there's somebody on here who's going to say, Chris, you know, America is more than just the USA. It's the Canadians. It's Mexico. It's Latin America. And you know what? It is. Uh, a lot of this, uh, certainly the USA world lens, but um, I love actually, I, lo I totally love that we can have this conversation because we can all learn a lot of things all at the same time um, to my other American fellow explorers. Okay. And uh, Pee Wee Doc says, show and tell was the best. It brings back good memories. I agree. As a um, someone who had show and tell in school, that was always my favorite part of the day um, was seeing like what the other kids brought from show and tell because it was more interesting than, you know, whatever the lesson plan likely was. Oh, Points Traveler says, am I drinking Starbucks? I am not drinking Starbucks today. I am drinking a uh, milk oolong tea, 50% sweet, regular ice that has this really interesting um, cup here. Uh, what's it say on it? It says, Bobo, light of my life, my sin, my soul. I don't really know what that means, but and then it's got this little girl on the cup right there. Interesting cups from this tea spot. Mm. And if you've never, these are the ones where too, where you can like drink out of it. And so it's got a little heart on it. You can take out and drink if you don't want to use a straw, but you all know I love my straws. Myth number eight, do Americans really use red cups in parties or is that a myth? On every TV show or movie, what you'll see at the parties are not drinks like this, but you'll see red Solo cups. Solo is a brand of cup makers, uh, and yes, at parties, red Solo cups are super popular. They're just a good, sturdy cup. Um, it's not all red Solo cups, but I think particularly in college parties, the red Solo cup is a thing. It's actually... You know, as like cups go, it's a more expensive cup because it's a nice sturdy cup. It's, you know, good to put beer in. It's good to put punch in. If you're at a cheaper party, you might end up with some paper cups that, you know, don't hold cold or ice as well. Um, and uh, Paint Killer says, I need to have more in and out drinks on these live streams. I, more in and out drinks. I'll certainly be happy to bring more in and out drinks. Sir. Um, Searles? Ario? Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce the, like, what part of the name goes with this, but uh, red solo cups also have seen transparent neon solo cups. Solo has branched out into different colors, uh, so yes, they have those other ones as well. Brandon says solo cups are real. Um, right, the Uniplexes, I've seen ceramic solo cups. Yeah, getting in the mood of uh, sustainability why throw it away every time? Why not just get a ceramic one that you can use all the time and reuse? Uh, Paint Killer says, I've often seen red solo cups at um, 
tailgates, but at parties I go to, we often use clear cups. Phil says they're bad for the environment. Not if you get the ceramic one. I mean, if you throw away the ceramic one every time. Uh, and uh, Derek says, I love your channel and your Vegas videos. All right. Well, thank you for that. Oh, and uh, Kathy's son, by the way, gets a shout out today. Uh, it is his 18th birthday today. So uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ben. Okay. Let's go on to the next myth. Myth number nine. Do Americans really decorate their lockers or is this a myth? In... Some high schools in the U.S., they have lockers, and yes, kids often decorate their lockers in high school. Um, you see it on television. I would say that in television, they probably decorate their lockers way more than I've seen in person, like the whole like front that you open up that has all those things. The schools I went to, we didn't have super decorated lockers, but I only went to one school that even had lockers. Like Lockers are a thing, I feel like, on their way out, just because then kids store drugs or weapons or who knows what in the lockers. And so many schools are phasing out lockers or just not building them at all entirely. And particularly in warm weather places, there's less lockers. You see the, I feel like the, the television stereotype of a high school, it's a single building with a hallway that has all the lockers on it. And at least in Southern California, High schools are not that. They are uh, much more um, open, separate buildings. It's outside to go to the classes, and so there's not really even like a, like a good place or a central place to put the lockers. Danelle says, uh, that was not what Janelle says, uh, but Janelle says decorating my locker was the best part of school. Paint Killer says I do miss having lockers um, and uh, that uh, some kids do decorate them, but not everyone is usually like one in 50. I think that's a good statistic. So Paint Killer, thanks uh, for that report on the ground today. Uh, and Carlos, thank you for that, Carlos, uh, says that brings memories of Saved by the Bell. Indeed, Saved by the Bell. That's where you see the kids uh, with lockers. Um, and uh, Zachary says in high school, the cheerleaders would decorate their lockers of the athletes the day of the games, we could sign their loggers for good luck. That's cool, Zachary. Um, this is another point about why we don't have lockers. Uh, a lot of the textbooks today are on the uh, iPad or on the computer, so um, kids don't don't need a locker because they don't have um, they don't things. They don't have books. Brandon says I didn't need my locker in high school, so Brandon uh, likely didn't decorate it. And Painkiller says the lockers constantly get jammed, so then people can't even open them. I am on tech says, we used to put pictures of girls we had crushes on, and Pee Wee Doc said having a mirror in your locker was a must. All right, how do I look? Good, good looking good today. Does everybody like, everybody like my tuxedo today for the show? I dressed up just for all of you. Myth number 10. Do Americans really have bacon with pancakes or is that just a myth? That is not a myth at all. I I am a great example of this. My breakfast, call it six out of seven days a week, is two or three pancakes, two pieces of bacon, and a sunny side up egg. So pan pancakes and bacon is a real breakfast in the USA. Pretty common breakfast. Does everybody eat it as often as I do? Likely not. I'm probably an anomaly in that case, but um, if you go to an American breakfast restaurant, definitely uh, bacon, pancakes, eggs is a staple thing you would get from Denny's or the International House of Pancakes. Um, now there's more like, you know, foofy breakfasts where it's like, well, get the fancy waffle or get the French toast. And I would say a lot of the foofy breakfast places in the U.S., um, it doesn't come standard with your pancakes and bacon. Like if you wanted the bacon, you're going to pay another four or six dollars. Like add bacon as a side, not just coming with it. Uh, Phil uh, gives thumbs up with it. Um, Kathy says, we had pancakes for breakfast today. Awesome, Kathy. Crystal says, it's even better if you've got grits. Especially if you've got shrimp in the grits. Maybe not for breakfast, but I like shrimp and grits. Point Traveler says, it is un-American to do any meal without bacon. Bacon is the quintessential American meat. I agree. Carlos says, I'm in Puerto Rico. We do have bacon and pancakes, uh, but for my diet, I only have turkey bacon. All right, but Carlos still has to have the bacon, so there we go. Uh, Paint Killer says, in Los Angeles, it's common to have bacon-wrapped hot dogs from street vendors. It sure is. I've never eaten one of those, though. Paint Killer, have you? Do you like them? I see them all the time. I just can't get over the 
ordering a hot dog out in the street in front of the Staples Center in downtown LA or something like that. Sarah points out it's a classic diner breakfast at the Yellow Productions Diner every morning. Randy says, bacon not just with pancakes, but with waffles, indeed. Myth number 11, do Americans really eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or is that a myth? Definitely not a myth. We definitely eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So I told you I eat uh, pancakes, bacon, eggs today as an adult, well, you know, maybe an adult kid at heart, but an adult on the outside. Uh, but growing up, when I was going to school, I would have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a glass of milk for breakfast nearly every day. What was my uh, jelly of choice? It was not boysenberry jelly, was my jelly of choice. Grape jelly is popular, strawberry jelly is popular. Those are probably the most popular jellies to have in a peanut butter jelly sandwich. I liked my skippy smooth peanut butter. Um, and uh, Phil uh, is not a fan of PB&Js. The Traveling Princess is also not a fan of PB&Js, but many people are. And um, there's even a, there was like a, like a food truck in Orange County uh, that was sold like sliders, like modern sliders. One of the sliders you could get was actually like a PB&J slider. That was pretty good. Uh, there's also a burger restaurant in Orange County in San Diego. Um, I think maybe they opened in Vegas too. It's called Slater's 50-50. 50-50 because their um, hamburger patty is 50% pork and 50% beef, but they also have a hamburger that has peanut butter and jelly on it. Surprisingly good. I know you're like a hamburger with peanut butter and jelly. You gotta go. You gotta go eat it. It's peanut butter and jelly time. It is peanut butter and jelly time. James says Elvis loved peanut butter, but banana and bacon sandwiches. They're really good. Peanut butter, banana, and bacon. Experts agree. Ask if I'm gonna go to the knots. Boysenberry Festival this year? Probably not because when we went um, the last two years, you didn't have to buy like a like a real park admission ticket to go on the rides. And the Traveling Princess still isn't really big enough to go on the ride, so it's not really worthwhile for us to buy the admission ticket to go to the festival just to eat currently. Um, Sarah is an anomaly and says, I didn't have PB&J until college. My parents never let me have it. Well, and what did you think, Sarah? Uh, and Electric Rick says that uh, PB&J is really good toasted. It is. Pee Wee Doc says, I, I still eat it. Crunchy peanut butter is so good. Uh, Zachary says, there's a zombie burger in Des Moines and they have an undead Elvis with peanut butter fried plantain and fried eggs. So good. That sounds, that sounds good. Uh, and uh, Carmen says, a Democrat or Republican, we all love our peanut butter in the U. Peanut butter is pretty good. You know, I recently found out too, doing the California Central Valley trip, almond butter, pretty good as well. Uh, and Bud points out the name of that burger restaurant in case you didn't catch me saying it's Slater's 5050. Thank you if I mumbled something else, but that is the name of that place. Myth number 12, do Americans really eat donuts for breakfast or is it just a TV myth? We really eat donuts for breakfast. The popo, the police love their donuts for breakfast. I mean, I don't know that all police love their donuts for breakfast, but that's a classic. I would say probably more, maybe a big city thing when you're like on the go, you're like, I'll just go get my donut and my coffee. Um, but it's it's fairly typical. I mean, you gotta have like a fresh donut though, like day old donuts, meh, no good. Or if it is day old, you gotta find a place to heat it up. Um, like donuts are totally, making a comeback in the US as well. This tweet is from 2013. This was probably when donuts were on the downslide, but tons of new donut restaurants are opening up that actually make pretty good donuts. Um, and uh, there's some comments. So more, lot, lots of comments about peanut butter. Paint Killer says, I love cookie butter the best from Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's has great stuff and their cookie butter is good as well. Mauricio says donuts and coffee is the best. Crystal says Homer has great taste. Samurai says I could if it doesn't have icing or too much sugar. But what's a donut if it doesn't have too much sugar anyway? Uh, the Uniplex says Canadians love their donuts. Canadians love donuts too. And uh, Carlos says American does run on Duncan. Crystal says Duncan, double Duncan. Uh, and Phil says, we had donuts if we had to work overtime on the weekends. I think donuts are a very typical American work food too. Like if, if you have early morning meetings, people will often bring boxes or dozens of donuts to the meeting. Like here, eat this. So maybe more people, particularly if they work in a 
um, I don't know, like a work setting that's not at home, like a like an actual workplace, might eat more donuts at work than they do just at the, you know, go to the donut shop themselves because people bring the donuts in. Uh, and then Carmen says, best part of LA are all the independent donut shops. Yeah, and like, I mean, America does run on Dunkin', but all these new independent donut shops are like way better than Dunkin'. And uh, Josh from California threw my lenses on. Welcome, Josh. Good to see you. Josh says, how can you beat a good donut for breakfast? It's hard, especially if it's a good maple bacon donut. I agree with Randy. Myth number 13, do Americans really have loads of multiple choice questions in exams or is that a myth? Definitely not a myth. We love our multiple choice questions in starting in early school to call. I feel like college even has more multiple choice tests than in high school because they're just super easy to grade. You know, I talked in my last uh, live stream where I talked about interesting facts about me, about taking the California high school proficiency exam to get my high school proficiency instead of graduating from high school. And um, that's a multiple question test. Uh, they do give you a 30 minute timed essay, but then there's just a hundred multiple choice questions. And so there is something to be said in America for advanced or getting good grades, is it, do you have to be smart or do you just have to be a good test taker? You know, do you have to look at these answers and be like, I don't know what the right one is, but I know what the wrong ones are. And so therefore there's only one left that's the right one. Uh, and uh, Bud says, it's interesting as an American to watch you explain the culture. I, I Hopefully I'm getting it right, Bud. If there's something you disagree with, let me know. MT says the answer is always C. It is always C. If you don't know, pick C. Um, on, uh, and Painkiller says on number four, be careful. Conrad, uh, the real estate agent, says the real estate agent exam in California was 150 multiple choice broker is even more. Uh, and I'm sure you passed with flying colors, Conrad. Thanks for that perspective. Points Traveler says the bar exam, which is the exam to become a lawyer in the U.S., is also multiple choice. <laughs> James says we were told Americans don't have good coffee. They were right. I don't know that I would agree with that, James. I mean... In a lot of places, the coffee is not good, but coffee is another one that's on a resurgence. If you go to a standard place and order coffee that isn't like a specialty coffee shop, it might not be great. However, comma, um, I've not been to New Zealand, but I've been to Australia, and I was blown away by the coffee in Australia. So um, New Zealand coffee might, if it's anything like Australian coffee, might definitely be better than American coffee. But... Uh, if you come to California, let me know and I'll tell you what at least I think some of the good coffee shops are. Myth number 14, do Americans really only have to write 300 words for an essay or is that a myth? I, our essays typically like are a certain number of words. Like if you apply to like colleges, a certain number of words. Um, you know, I think like an interesting, this is like another one of those interesting culture things between school and between real life. You know, in school, I think like we were taught longer with more complicated words was better, right? Like if you write a longer paper that has more complicated words, it's better. You get better grades. But then you get into the real world and that that's not better. If you write longer with more complicated words, nobody reads it and people don't understand it. You know, the best writing in a normal life setting is uh, shorter is better with smaller words is better. So you don't see me using a lot of um, highfalutin, super califragilistic, ispialidocious words here. But if I was in school, I would have just gotten an A plus for being able to work super califragilistic, ispialidocious into this live stream. Conrad says, uh, I have a history master's degree I wrote for two and a half hours straight for one exam. I believe it, Conrad. And so um, that's a great data point for people about the uh, longer, right, equals better, right? For definitely a lot of these things at the graduate level, um, <clears throat> you know, for like master's exams and these kinds of things, uh, it is just you, like if you don't write the entire time, then you're definitely not going to do well because they, they kind of like they kind of weigh they give it the weight test. You know, does this does this weigh enough? If it doesn't weigh enough, then you can't you can't get a good grade. Um, number fifteen. Do Americans really say have a nice day, or is that an urban legend? I, I, is it having an say having a nice day too friendly? We absolutely say have a nice day. I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good day. <clears throat> I hope you have a good day. Have a great weekend.
Have a great weekend. How's your Monday? Hey, happy Monday. How's Monday doing? I, I think the U.S. is a pretty cheery place for sure. This is one where you also greet people by saying, hey, how's it going? Uh, and we do expect a response to that question, like, hey, how's it going? Or if you're in Hawaii, it's, hey, how's it? Um, now, maybe we're not looking for like a super deep conversation. We're probably looking for the person to be like, oh, good. Okay. How about you? Oh, good. Okay. Thanks. You know, if you get into like, really, how's it, go how's it going? Well, I've got this ingrown toenail that's been bothering me. And, you know, people, you like, you can definitely get in a little too deep. And then people are like, okay, Tiger, I was just saying hi. Mm -hmm. But uh, Kathy says, we uh, do not say good day much at all in Australia. As much as um, what Crocodile Dundee might have us believe. Uh, Phil says Americans will give a positive salutation. Brennan says, I do say these greetings. Conrad said, I said it 432 times at the office today. Conrad, I am impressed by the count that you have. Uh, and James says, uh, everyone was friendly. Uh, and Sarah says, it's a phrase in a lot of countries. It is. Um, I agree. Though obviously said in kind of different ways. Uh, but yes, we do like to tell people, have a nice day. Number 16, do Americans really eat cookie dough or is that a myth like the thing with sniffing glue? Oh, we really eat raw cookie dough. That's totally a thing. We heard somebody talk about cookie butter at Trader Joe's, which is not the same as cookie dough, but like you know, raw cookie dough. I've had friends eat raw cookie dough. I've eaten raw cookie dough. There's even like shops that specialize in cookie dough. That's what they sell. Like you go to this place with cookie dough, cookie dough ice cream, you get ice cream with cookie dough, raw cookie dough in it, or you get ice cream on top of raw cookie dough. It's pretty good. I mean, it is, in this case, the cookie dough is designed to be eaten. So while it's raw, it's not like the same one. If you had like maybe a lot of egg or something, you'd be like, ah, this isn't like good to be eaten raw. This is like cookie dough that is made to be eaten raw. Um, some interesting notes about have a nice day. The Uniplex says, I worked at a hotel that we were not allowed to say have a nice day. That is, that is weird. That's one weird hotel. Um, and Phil says, raw cookie dough maybe in ice cream. Maybe, maybe. Clearly Phil is not of the raw cookie dough eating fan club. Number 17, can I ask, do Americans actually go about throwing toilet paper over houses or is that a myth? It is not a myth. Kids, toilet paper, other people's houses. Maybe maybe the house is hard. It's, like it's hard to get it over the house, but like trees in front of the house, toilet papering cars is a thing. Toilet papering people's desks or cubicles is a thing. Um, you know, and so right, how does that work? You take the roll of toilet paper, you hold one part of it, and someone throws the toilet paper, and then it just kind of unfurls, and you, you got all this toilet paper. It's it's annoying to clean up. It's really hard to clean up toilet paper because you try to get it wet or you pull it down and it breaks. Um, if you know me, please don't toilet paper my house or my car. I don't, <coughs> I don't want to clean it up. I have never toilet papered someone else's house, but I have seen plenty of houses, trees, cars, toilet papered. Something that I thought was neat uh, that I've seen recently as a way to try to get away from um, toilet papering houses is houses being flocked. What does that mean? So uh, getting like, there are companies that will do this. You'll say like, hey, I would like to flock my friend's house and they will bring 50 um, plastic plink, pink flamingos and place them in your friend, acquaintances, brothers, sisters, moms, dads, whomever in the house this yard of the person you want to flock. You put a flock of pink flamingos in front of their yard and of course they come out and they're like, what? are all these flamingos? Oh, and then there's a sign to be like, congratulations for graduating from high school. Um, and it's a bit more easy to clean up because the people that you asked to put the pink flamingos there in a day or two, they'll come and take them back and flock the next person's house. Um, Pee Wee Doc says, uh, lots of TP memories. Phil says, we usually do it about high school graduation. Dunk says, we uh, toilet papered a tree once. And uh, Frogster says, uh, it is a kid's thing that you may do when you hate them, or not necessarily, um, but also just to kind of like celebrate a uh, thing. Mike says, we never did the TP thing. And Randy says, we had a TP party at school. I'm curious, what was the, what was the TP party? Did everybody like dress up in a TP or things like that? What was it? 
Myth number 18, do Americans actually have high school reunions or is that actually a myth? We really have high school reunions. Five year reunion, 10 year reunion, 20 year reunion, 25 year reunion. I haven't been to any high school reunions because as I, I talked about sort of my graduation or non-graduation from high school, but I have plenty of friends that do have and go to high school reunions. I think they are more prevalent in smaller places, smaller high schools. A lot of the places, big cities, big high schools, then the high school reunion isn't as big because it's just, you know, people have moved on and they're not there anymore. But, you know, if you're in a small town, then that's like a close-knit group that wants to get together again. Um, myth number 19, do Americans actually celebrate 4th of July or is it just an urban myth? I honestly can't tell. We definitely celebrate 4th of July. 4th of July is one of my favorite holidays. 4th of July is Independence Day in the U.S. when the U.S. became independent from uh, the uh, the crown, of the British crown. And uh, so what is 4th of July? I mean, are we sitting there going like, oh my gosh, we are so happy that we're not under that British rule anymore. No, uh, the 4th of July really... Uh, you know, because it's, it's been hundreds of years, right? Uh, the 4th of July really has become like a celebration of summer. I would say it's the iconic summer celebration day. It's a holiday, so a lot of people have the day off. Uh, and it becomes a day to go to the beach. It becomes a day to get together with friends or family, to barbecue, and to watch fireworks. There is uh, a lot of countries do fireworks around uh, New Year's, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. We do the most fireworks in the USA on July 4th. It is the day that almost any city you're in, you will see fireworks someplace um, there. And it's also interesting if you're uh, like internationally around the world near a U.S. military base, they will often um, send up fireworks on July 4th as well. So if you're if you're someplace else and you're like, yeah, what do those American fireworks look like? Well, you know, see if the the local military base in Germany or places like that uh, might be doing it. Uh, Phil says, July 4th, picnic fireworks, such fun. Indeed, it's fun. That's what that's what people know as July 4th. Uh, Bud says, of course we do. Another real big American holiday is Cinco de Mayo that Americans think is um, Mexican Independence Day, but not so much. It's just become a, another American drinking holiday, although we don't get... Uh, the 5th of May off as an official holiday like we do July 4th. James says about uh, how many public holidays roughly are there a year? Roughly 10? Roughly 10. Myth number 20. Do Americans uh, in school actually get to leave as soon as the bell goes or is that a myth? This is another one that people probably saw on Saved by the Bell or Beverly Hills 90210 and yeah. Pretty much. Uh, if you're in high school where there's a bell, maybe less in elementary school because the teachers have a bit more like control over the elementary school kids. But in high school, that bell rings, the kids are right out of the class. I mean, it's like bell, pew, gone. Um, and so that's how you get to leave class. That's how you get to leave school. Everything runs by the bell that controls everything in those institutions. 21. Do Americans really boil water in microwaves or is that a myth someone can confirm? This is one I've talked about before on um, like previous videos I've done about American culture. And a lot of people find it around the world find it surprising that um, electric kettles are not more prevalent in American households. The way most people in the USA boil water is on the stove top. Um, I mean, certainly if you're making pasta, you'd put it water in a thing and like a pot and boil it. But a lot of tea kettles are just those things that you fill up with water, put on the stovetop and turn that on and the thing whistles woo, once the water's boiling. Um, but people who don't have stoves or don't have those kettles, then um, absolutely put it in the microwave and it doesn't quite boil, but it gets hot enough that you, I mean, you can make it boil, but you probably don't want to. By the time it boils, you're breaking your cup or something in the microwave, but you get a hot to make tea out of it in the microwave, absolutely. We are de we are definitely fans of the electric kettle. Uh, makes a lot of sense for us. We're making a lot of water for tea and those sorts of things. Um, 
Yeah, Phil says, uh, pot on the stove or kettle for me. Uh, Kathy says, we have a kettle and we boil it here. Uh, and uh, Ice Cold Beverage says, I use electric kettle for boiling water. I'm in the USA. I'm not saying people in the USA don't use electric kettles, but they are not nearly as prevalent here as they are in many other countries. Uh, Jamba says, I don't trust microwaving water. Why? What happens when you microwave it, Jamba? Why don't you trust it? Uh, like the, the, radio, the radiation waves in it? Um, Frogster says if you need something quick, use a microwave, but not a large amount of water. Pee Wee Doc says electric kettle gets it hotter. I agree it does. Um, Bud says why not? Yeah, boil it in the microwave. Um, Jay says pot on the stove until our friends from the UK came to visit. And then Jay, did they tell you why don't you have an electric kettle? Or what happened with your friends uh, from the UK? Uh, and Diana says I just bought an electric kettle as fast as convenient. Best thing ever. I am glad you're enjoying your electric kettle, Diana. 22, do Americans learn to drive in automatic cars? Like, do most Americans drive automatic cars, or is that a myth? Most Americans learn how to drive automatic cars, drive an automatic car, and don't even know how to drive a manual car. I am in that category of people who are unable to drive a manual car. When I go to Europe, I definitely have to check the boxes on rental cars to be like, only automatic cars for me, which I know when you go to places like Italy, they're like, oh, we've only got three, so you better reserve that ahead of time. And yes, I need to reserve it ahead of time because if it's got a stick shift, I am I am not going anywhere. One time I got in one of those cars in Italy. They was like, oh, well, we don't have, but they, just, they didn't give me the, they gave me the car and they gave me the wrong car. And I was like, can I even get this out of the parking lot? And I, I, just, I, I couldn't even get it out of the parking lot. I'm just like, so I give me the automatic car. Um, cause I can't, and that's, uh, it, rental cars in the U S when you rent a car, you don't have an option of manual or automatic. All rental cars in the U S are automatic unless you're renting from like a exotic rental car company where you can get like a manual Porsche or something like that. And, uh, Phil says, indeed, it is hard to find it in the stick shift. Indeed, it is hard to find. Brandon says, I drove a big Ford Excursion as my first car, but no manual. Jeff says, I've never driven a manual car. Pee Wee Doc says, nowadays, uh, but I learned on a manual and it was called a stick shift. Indeed, that is what we call it. Um, all right. And uh, Mike says, in high school, stick drive practice, 1982. Yeah, I think um, in schools or driving classes, this and that, they don't, like in the U.S., they don't, they don't even teach you how, like, it's not a thing anymore. Uh, Melissa says, I never want to drive any manual car. Uh, Jamba says, three of my nephews will be learning to drive self-driving Teslas. How things change, how things change. Myth number 23. Do Americans shop in Target frequently, or is that a myth? America is known for its big box stores. Walmart, Target, Kmart out of business, Costco. Um, and so I would say Americans definitely shop in big box stores frequently. As a percentage of um, the USA, Walmart definitely has the lion's share of big box store shopping. Um, I'd probably say Costco is second with Target third. I like Target better than Walmart. Um, Walmart stores are a little too messy for me. Um, and while they are slightly cheaper than Target, I like that Target keeps their stores shiny, bright, nice. I feel good about shopping at Target where I don't, I don't feel good about shopping at Walmart. Um, we love our Costco. We go to Costco probably twice a month and you know, Costco, sometimes jokingly is referred to as the $100 club. Like you can't leave Costco without spending at least $100. I mean, you can, but you can't because there's just so much stuff to buy. Uh, Phil goes to Costco once a week. Uh, Melissa says, I like Target, but too expensive. Jay says, Walmart, Costco, but not Target. Brandon says, I go to Target every other week. Pee Wee says, Target has everything. Why not? Um, why not? Uh, Mike says, Walmart just got back, missed the 24-7. Yeah, with the pandemic, a lot of places have um, stopped doing that. But that was definitely one thing I liked about Walmart, too, was you get any time of day you can go to Walmart. Um, Walmart is also great for people doing RV camping or the van life across the U.S. because Walmart encourages uh, people in RVs or uh, campers 
to park and sleep in their parking lots. Why? It makes it safer. It makes the parking lot safer to have all these people sleeping and just awake in their parking lot. Um, so that's a great way. If you are traveling across the country and don't want to spend in hotels and want to like camp out somewhere and you do rent a van or something like that, sleep in a Walmart parking lot. Jamba says I'm not allowed in Costco stores anymore. I'm sure there's a great story behind that, Jamba. Um, Randy doesn't go to stores anymore. He buys everything on Amazon. Uh, and Kathy, uh, there's um, Walmart, Co no, Walmart, Costco in Australia. I always spend a lot at Costco. Uh, Kawaii Nancy says, I prefer Target, but I'm biased. I used to work there in 2000. Number 25. It's 24. Sorry, I skipped the number. Uh, do Americans actually do the thing where they say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, or is that a myth? Actually a thing. Yeah, we grew up uh, with Every classroom had an American flag in it, and we gave the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. This is another one that's on the down slope. Uh, many states or school districts have um, opted uh, not to do the Pledge of Allegiance at the beginning of every class. 25. Do Americans have cheerleaders at high school sports matches, or is this just another myth? Definitely, uh, if... High school sports is really big in the U.S., particularly in smaller, more rural towns. And cheerlead the cheerleading squad is uh, definitely like where the popular pretty girls are in the U.S. Um, we live near a high school, and when I go on walks by it, like, say, after school at 4 o'clock, the cheerleaders will be out there practicing along with the band, along with the um, football team. I was neither cool. I was neither the football player or the cheerleader, I was the, guys can be cheerleaders too, right? They need people to, you know, throw the girls up in the air. Um, but uh, I was a band geek. Yeah, I uh, played the cymbals in the band. That's right, here we go. All right, uh, do Americans actually play dodgeball or is that a myth? We play dodgeball, yeah, it's a great game. You throw the ball at other people. If they get hit by the ball, then they're out. There's a whole movie about dodgeball, great game. Number 27, do Americans actually use those brown paper bags for lunch? Or is that a myth? What's wrong with a brown paper bag? Of course we use brown paper bags. Small brown paper bags that you put kids' lunch in. Um, I think a lot of kids also eat lunch at school, but if parents are packing their lunch for them, brown paper bags are where it's at. What about lunch boxes? You could put in a lunch box, but you're going to clean the lunch box. Lunch box. I, mean, I don't know, maybe 50-50 lunch boxes and brown paper bags. Do Americans really sell lemonade at their doorsteps during summer? Sure do. The lemonade stand is like the classic first business of many American kids. Obviously, their parents are generally sitting right next to them as they sell this lemonade for 50 cents or a dollar, something like that. It might not be at their doorstep. They might go to like a street corner to set up their lemonade stand with their signs that say lemonade. And whether people buy it to drink it, probably not. They probably buy it just to support the kids and who knows, might pour that lemonade down the drain. But like Girl Scout cookies and popcorn from the Boy Scouts. Just a way to um, help teach the younger kids something about money and, and buying, buying, buying and selling things and having that American entrepreneurial spirit. Number 29, do Americans say awesome all the time or is that just a minute? I think awesome is a, is a fairly standard American word. I like to use awesome sauce, awesome sauce. I like to use cool beans, cool beans. How is that cool beans? Um, I don't know. I don't know that we say awesome all the time, but definitely awesome is a, you, a word we use to describe things. I think Americans are often accused of being overly exaggerating about how good something is. Like um, you see it on uh, food, like American food channels. Um, you know, Mark, Mark Weens. Uh, let's talk about Mark Weens because whenever he eats anything, <laughs> This is the best. This is the best tea ever. I love Mark. I really do. I love his channel. But his, I can't even do the facial expression as he does. But I feel like to be a food YouTuber, you almost have to be like, oh my gosh, I have like died and gone to heaven with this thing. And then, you know, other people eat it and they're like, I don't, I mean, it's, so, it's okay. It's okay, you know. Uh, culture wise, you know, this is one where I really like to eat dim sum. Uh, dim sum, Chinese dim sum, where they have like the steam carts and push around. And on, on Yelp, which is the American restaurant rating app of choice, 
You can rate things from one to five stars. And in Southern California, like no dim sum restaurant has more than three and a half stars because Chinese people are the opposite of, um, you know, the standard American culture, which is we love everything. Chinese people are like, this sucks. I hate this. This isn't good. This isn't good at all. You come back every week to dim sum. I know, but it's not good. How many stars does get one? You know, right? But like, you look at the um, restaurant right next door that's a barbecue place, and it's, it's got five stars on Yelp because Americans want to be like, I love this food. So I think that's just a interesting, um, interesting cultural difference related to how awesome something is or how um, the actual reality of it is. Number 30, do Americans say bye on the phone or is that a myth? Bye, bye, see you later, bye, bye, see you later, bye. We, we say bye on the phone. Um, peace, see you later, talk to you later. I don't know, some people don't like to say goodbye. Talk to you later is another one, but uh, that is definitely a way of ending conversation. We, we have taught the traveling princess to say bye to people. Bye, bye. That's what we do. I've got um, two extra ones, uh, OC girl, uh, wanted to add these in and have me talk about these. Um, is it true kids get bullied on the school bus and at lunch? For sure, bullying is a real thing in the US and the times that it often happens is on the yellow school bus to and from school and at lunchtime because you can't get away from the other kids and there's not a lot of supervision there. Uh, and is it true, so we talked about shoes in the house, out the house. Uh, is it true kids run around barefoot outside on the street? It is definitely true, yeah. We were uh, in a playground the other day and uh, trialing princess, she's two. There was another girl who was also about the same age, not wearing shoes in the playground. Trialing princess wears shoes when she goes to the playgrounds. Other girl, not wearing shoes. We see a lot of kids running around the street not wearing shoes and I, I like my shoes out in the street because there's like, rocks and glass and my feet are really tender <laughs> so we make sure we uh keep our shoes on but in particular if you go down to like the beach communities you know shoes off it's definitely like the, i i have lived a lot of my life surfing down at the beach with shoes off i also carried tweezers in my car because i've ended up with glass in my feet um more than i've wanted to but that was like one of those things be like you need this because you step on something and so at least for me, you got to be hyper vigilant to run around in uh, bare feet. Kathy says, I do have bare feet outside. Um, and uh, Melissa says, I never got bullied on the school bus or lunch, but everywhere else. Yes. All right. Thank you for that uh, data point. Melissa Janelle says, bad bullying on the bus. Uh, and Norma says, my mother used to say, sayonara. Yeah, Phil. So, particularly about the beach, uh, this is, I mean, definitely in Hawaii, you see a ton of people all the time, a lot of places uh, without shoes. Although, here's another interesting uh, cultural cultural word point is in the mainland of the USA, we refer to often like casual things we would wear in the house um, as slippers. And the things that you would wear outside where you kind of put the thong in between your big toe and your small toe as flip-flops, but in Hawaii, um, they refer to flip-flops as slippers. Like if you go to a shoe store, that's what it would say. It would say slippers, but they're actually flip-flops. They're not like cozy, fuzzy, ugg type things with, you know, lamb skin, sheep's fur. Uh, and uh, I know Kathy is super excited to be going to Hawaii in five days. I'm super excited for you as well. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, fellow explorers, if you asked a question I didn't answer, now's your time to ask it again. Or if you got a few more here, let them rip. Make sure you put a question mark at the end. Um, and uh, we'll hit a couple, let's see. Um, MT says, Chris, can you explain what per my email really means in the American corporate world? Per my, per my email, I guess that's the like, as I said in my email, I think that's what per my email really means in the corporate world. I don't know if there's something hidden in there, but you know, if you've watched my Office Survival Guide channel, one of my least favorite phrases in the corporate world uh, in real life, when people come up to you in the hallway or this, like, Chris, did you, did you get my email? Which one? I, I've gotten emails from you before, but like you need to be more specific, not just, did you get my email? So per my email, I'm like, I don't even know what email you are talking about. Uh, 
Um, Meritocratic Mafia says, do high schoolers make a pack to cash in their V card on prom night? Um, that's certainly what the movies say. I didn't go to prom. I wasn't, I didn't, wasn't around for prom. So I actually, actually am not the great person to tell you that. Uh, Lisa says, why do Americans wear shoes in the house? Lisa, that was point, uh, eight or something in this video. So, uh, I encourage you to, to maybe go back and rewatch it if you missed the beginning once the archive is ready. James says, is Disneyland fully open yet? Pretty much. I mean, not all the live stuff is back, but it's pretty much, uh, open. Uh, Jake says, where's your next, uh, trip booked to? Uh, currently no big trips booked because we're, like, lots of places are reopening, and so we're kind of, like, waiting to see what the world does. Uh, we really want to go back to Japan. We're hearing that might be reopened for this summer. Taiwan might reopen. So nothing booked because we're waiting for more reopenings. Uniplex says, how many countries have you been to? 29. I think I counted for the, my uh, like 50 interesting facts about me and I seem to remember 29. Could have been 28. Something around there. Ice Cold Beverage says, what are some common myths about the USA you consider not true? Ice Cold Beverage, I did a whole live stream about that. Um, and so if you actually just search for Yellow Productions USA myths, you'll find like three videos I've done on this subject. And one of them is just entirely um, myths that people find not true. And I'm not trying to copy you out that answer other than I have a um, <laughs> another thing. Yeah, MT says, oh, and the point of per my email is, did you not listen to what I said in the email? That's that's probably what it means. Quiet Nancy says, have you ever done a cruise? We uh, did like an overnight cruise from Sweden to Norway. It was like one night, um, but Traveling Princess, uh, well, we don't know about the Traveling Princess yet, but OC Girl uh, gets seasick, so um, we don't do a lot of things uh, on cruises. Christina says, have you been on Alcatraz Island going on um Going to San Francisco on Saturday early flight. Uh, yes, we have been to Alcatraz. We really enjoyed it. Um, so if you're considering whether you should go, I think you should. I think Alcatraz is pretty fun. Um, plan to spend at least a couple hours on Alcatraz. Uh, Carlos asks, have we ever been to Barcelona? We have been. Um, I was seven, eight years ago, something like that, when we did uh, Spain. Mike wants to know my bow tie spins. Boo! No, my, my bow tie does not spin. I should get one. Um, Phil says, which sites do you book your travel with? I book my travel always directly with the travel providers. So if I'm Marriott Hotel, I book with Marriott. If it's Hyatt, a Hyatt Hotel, I book with a Hyatt. It's the airlines. I book all directly with the airlines. I don't use any of the aggregators, Expedia, Hotels.com. I book direct. Eh, except in Japan. When we go to Japan, I do use some of the um, online travel sites to go to Japan. Uh, in that case, I really like agoda.com, A-G-O-D-A, agoda.com, when we're booking uh, hotels in Japan or some Asian countries. Bud asks if you want to be a digital nomad. I, you know, there's a lot of discussions about the lifestyle of a digital nomad. It's cool to be a digital nomad because you can go anywhere and you can work anywhere. Um, I like to come home. I like the comfort of my house. And I, I don't like doing the live stream today. I've got um, like two 30 inch monitors on either side and big lights up here that you can't see and boom microphones. And so to do some of the things I do, like I got the, like a couple home studios set up. Uh, and so um, no, cause I can't, I can't bring all my gear with me. So I don't, I don't really want, I like traveling, um, but I don't think I want to not have a home. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, uh, on every live stream, I always give away a Yellow Productions Crew shirt to someone who answers one of my questions correctly. And if you want to win this Yellow Productions Crew shirt, you need to answer my question, which is, what is the biggest word I use today on this live stream? If you answer that correctly, you will win this shirt. And I will say, close Close will count. Close, like in um, croquet, will count for this one. And if you, uh, for some reason, don't win one, and you're like, Chris, I would love to pick one up. Well, no problem. You can head over to the Yellow Productions shop at shop.yellow-productions.com. You can pick one of those up. And if you're wondering, Chris, when is the next live stream, head over to update.yellow-productions.com. Sign up for the Yellow Productions email list, and you will get an email at least a day before I go live to let you know the time, the day, and the subject, so you can decide whether you want to join and listen to me yammer. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. And now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner.
Congratulations, James. You are the winner. Super Kedger, Fragilistic, Ispialidocious. Close counts in this one. Uh, so you win. Um, now, you know what? There might be some people who were like typing out the whole answer and they're like, Chris, that's cheating. So I'm, we're going to have two winners today. James, you win. And Carlos, you win too because you typed out the whole thing as well. Two Yellow Productions crew shirts going out. Uh, send me an email to... Chris at yellow-productions.com. Let me know your address. Let me know your size. And I hope they're going to a great home. Well, fellow explorers, I really enjoyed hanging out with y'all today. Uh, and as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.